uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever the case may be. Um, in this video, we're going to cover the basics of applying materials to an object. Now, the thing about it is, is that when we have an object, uh, by default, it has this standard gray material for snow reflections or uh, any refraction either going on. Uh, and this type of material is what's known as a Lambert material, um, and that will make more sense momentarily. And so the thing about it is, is whenever we make a model, we want to be able to make a high quality render uh, or an image with all of the, the lights in the scene and all of the um, assumed materials of the object taken into account. Now, if we look at this, uh, and I want to go over what I'm expecting here, I want kind of a, uh, a ceramic appearance for this uh, vase. The rings on this, I want them to appear as a metal type of material. And these little orbs, I want them to have the appearance of glass or crystal. Now, to do this, we need to apply materials to these that uh, simulate the effects or the, the properties of those materials as they appear in the real world. So, before I start out, I also want to uh, touch on something else, and that's correctly, re uh, correctly naming uh, objects and grouping them together. Now, I'm going to open up my outliner over here, and I'm going to open up my little mouth pose thing. So if you don't remember, the outliner is the screen that shows all of the objects inside of a scene. And you can see here, I already have all of mine grouped, but this is not one object, right? And on, what you want to do is create groups of similar objects, so it makes it easier when we're applying the same material to multiple objects, and plus it looks a lot better. You don't have something over here called uh, extruded surface one or uh, sphere seven or something. You, if you select something, you should know exactly what you're selecting over here. Okay. Uh, now my rings, I should have them actually named you know, one, two, three, four, and five, going from top down. But uh, you know, there's real, really no naming. Uh, expectations so long as you name them correctly. Now this other thing here you can see is a group and that's indicated with the little um, rhombus slash parallel. Yeah, it's a parallelogram. It's not a rhombus. It's just taller on the, the Y than it is on the X. But anyway, uh, this indicates that this is a group. Now to group things, and I'll go ahead and do something real quick here. Let's draw a couple cylinders. Let's say that I want to group these cylinders together. Right? We look over here, it's cylinder one, two, and three. And let's say I want to group these so that I can easily find them inside of my outline. So what you want to do is you want to select all those objects. So you can go to right-click object mode and select all of them like that. But that gets tricky when you have objects like this. Like I can't do that with these orbs. See? If I do that, I'm going to grab everything else. A better way to do it is select it inside of the outliner. Now you can select an object and hold down Command on a Mac or Control on a PC and individually select them. If they're all in a line, like here we have uh, cylinder one, two, and three, you can hold down, you can click the first one, hold down Shift, and select the last one, and you'll grab all of them. But if they're not, Let's say, for example, they're like this. I can't select this top one and then hold down Shift and select the bottom one because it's going to select the top one and everything in between. So in this case, you want to select the first one, hold down Command, and select the top uh, the top one. And uh, also, if you want to move things around in the outliner, you can't just uh, left click and drag because it's selecting multiple things, right? And you don't right click either. What you do is middle mouse click. So 
to press your uh, mouse wheel down, and then you can move things around. All right, so to group these, I'm going to select all of them, and I'm going to press Command-G or Control-G, um, depending on which kind of computer you're using, and that will create a group that uh, contains all of these objects. It's like making a folder, right? I can double click the name and give it a name like that. So anytime I want to select all those objects now, I can just select, uh, select this name and it'll select everything in that group. And that's what I've done over here, right? All the orbs and the vase are all and all of everything is in one group, but I've also have a subgroup here for just the orbs. Now I should also make one here for the ring, so I'm going to do that. I select all the rings, Command G, and I'll call this E. And I'll go ahead and get rid of these cylinders. I don't need this. And the swirl, I can just leave it by itself. It's fine. So I have the rings in one group, and I have the orbs in another group. Let's go ahead and start applying some materials. So to apply material to an object, you need to right-click over top, and there's multiple ways of doing this. Okay, uh, one of the more common I, I use the old way, right? Um, in my uh, 2014 and above, they introduced something called the hypershade window, and you can use that, um, but it's it's a lot more difficult to understand. And we're not really making any kind of uh, shaders that are super complex, so we're not really going to go into that. We're going to use simple shaders, simple materials that are already built in. The exception is when we get to Arnold, uh, which is the built-in awesome renderer that comes with Maya 2017 and above. Actually, 18, I think it's 18 and above. Uh, they had uh, Mental Ray before uh, Arnold, and Mental Ray was awesome, but... Arnold's pretty good too. Anyway, so what you want to do is you right click over top of the object, right click and hold, and you can see at the bottom we have assign existing material, assign favorite material, or assign new material. And we're going to assign a new material, and you get this new pop up called assign new material, and there's lots of stuff here. The one that comes up by default are all of the Maya ones. And these ones, you don't really want to render with them, but they're good for demonstration. So let's go ahead and check them out. So we're going to choose Fong E. And you can see what happens here is it adds a little bit of a shine to these objects, right, to the orbs. Let's go ahead and apply a different one to the ring. I'll select all my rings by selecting the group. Right click and hold. Assign another new material. And for this one, let's assign a blend. And it adds some shine as well, but not as much. Now to change the properties of these, we do this inside of the attribute editor. And we haven't really done this yet. We've gone and changed uh, the translate, rotate, scale, etc. But if you look over to the right, you have this new tab, which represents the materials. Now you should always name your materials as well. So we're going to name this material rings material. We're also going to do the same thing with the orbs. Make sure we select an individual one for now. And we can go over here and see where it says Fong E. We assigned a Fong material to this one. And we're going to rename this one Jules. Or we'll actually we'll call it Jules. Okay. Now you can also see all of your materials inside of the Hypershade window. And I will open the Hypershade just so you can see uh, how you can edit your materials. So to open the Hypershade, you go to Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Now if I open this up, now down here is where you can create some pretty complex uh, shaders with whatever material you choose. And again, we're not going to get into this. And up here, you can see we have a list of all of the materials. The Lambert one is the one by default. Like I said at the beginning, the, the Lambert is applied to all, all objects at the beginning, but you can change it by doing what we just did. And if I choose these, you can see that I can come in, 
and change the properties of these materials. So if I go to the, <clears throat> and let's not do it, let's do this with the vase. I want to close the hypershade, select the vase, and assign another new material. And with this one, I'm going to choose Lambert because I don't want this to have a shine. I want it to appear to be like a clay or marble or ceramic. It might have a little bit of a shine, but we're not going to have it. So I'll choose Lambert, and I'm going to rename this to Vase Material. And I'm going to change the color. So we can go in and add some color to this guy. And maybe we'll add a little bit of transparency to these orbs. So I'll select the, the jewel. And then over here where it says transparency, we can crank this up. Like so, maybe something like that. Okay. Now by default, you can't really see anything. But if you press 6, you'll be able to see the shaded view of whatever it is. If, if the way that we have it now, we have 5, but if we press 6, it has the shades and it has any textures that you've applied, like colors. Right. So, let's go ahead and take what we have right now. Let's add something else to the ring so they're not so uh, drab. Editor, go into rings material, and on this one, let's add some color as well. Make it look like a gold, something like that. And then now that we have some colors applied, um, let's go ahead and do one for the. Actually, let's go ahead and apply the same material to the swirl that we used on the uh, ring. So I'm going to right click assign existing material and then we'll choose rings material and that will apply that material to that as well so the next thing we're going to look at is making a render now we're going to do some basic renders first basic render uses Maya's built-in system and what we want to do is actually open up the render view and that's this button that looks like uh, the thing they used in the, min, uh, the placards or the the card, the scene card that they use in movies. And we're going to open up Render View so we can see what's going on. And this little drop down menu, yours will say Maya Software by default, and that's what we're going to start with. So we're just going to create a render, and the way the render works is that it uses whatever camera you want, but right now we're only using our perspective camera, so it's going to do a render with this the way it is in the scene. So I'll go ahead and click this one, which is the little um, movie thing. I'll have to look up what that's called later. Uh, with no eyeball, right? So you just click this, and we'll see we get a render of the current object in the scene, calculating the lights used in the scene. Now we can see that right now there's no lights, and the thing about it is, is that you want to have lights in your scene to make good renders. So let's go ahead and create a light. We're going to create a directional light. It's pretty standard. It acts like the sun does in the sky. It's, it shines in one direction at all the time. And um, it can be interrupted by anything and create shadows. So what we'll do is we'll go to create lights, directional light. And it's going to create this in the middle of the scene. And I can't see it right now because the vase is in the way, but it'll make it right at the origin. So the first thing you do when you make a light is go ahead and go to your move tool so you can move it into position. And if you lose it, keep in mind you can always find it inside of your outliner. You see here there's one called directional light. And you can always use F to focus on that light. Now if you look at this directional light, and we'll talk more about lights later, but right now, uh, we're just going to use this guy. And you can see that it's a directional light. It just shines in one direction, and that direction is the way that the arrows point. So if I, and it, it can't, it doesn't matter the position for the directional light. It doesn't matter where it is in the scene. I can put it all the way over here or whatever, and it's still going to shine infinitely in this direction from all um, aspects of this, of this side. So no matter where I have the light position, it's going to shine in this direction. 
uh, on all things equally. So with that done, let's go ahead and create a quick render. So open up the render view, go ahead and do a render. All right, it looks exactly the same. Let's go ahead and rotate this light, go down, do another render. You can see the difference. This time the light is shining down so it's creating these shadows where the, uh, the lip at the top of the vase is blocking the light. Let's go ahead and rotate it a little bit this way. And you can see we have a little bit more of a change. Let's rotate it this way and see what happens. Here we can see we have light coming off on the side, and we almost have kind of a, an ellipse, like a little eclipse kind of an effect. Okay. Now, we can also use this same thing to apply textures to an object. So I'm going to close the render view, and let's go edit the vase. So I'll open up my attribute editor. I'll go over here to where it says the vase material. And to apply a texture, and uh, by the way, your attribute editor may have a bunch of extra tabs, uh, depending on how many operations that you've performed on this object. To get rid of these, you need to delete the history of the object. So this is what you do. I select this object, and I'm going to go to Edit, Delete All by Type, History. Now once I do that, and I go back to my attribute editor, you'll see that there's now only three tabs, because I've deleted all these operations, I can't go backwards anymore. So, you know, only use that whenever you're completely finished editing the shape, or else you can't go backwards and change anything about it. Alright, so with the base material, we're going to talk next about this little checker box that's next to all of these different channels, and that's what these are called, the color channel, the transparency channel, ambient color channel, incandescence channel, bump mapping channel, etc. And we'll talk more about what all these mean later on, but right now we're just going to play around with it, get the basics down to understand the different channels. Okay. So we're going to go to the checker box, and this allows us to apply a texture to this object. So we're just going to choose one of the built-in ones for now. We'll choose checker. And we'll see what happens. We have a checker box effect applied. And you can kind of see through it here because we made these a little bit transparent, the orbs. But you can see what's going on here. We have a checker box going around. Okay. Now, to uh, get back out of this, and you'll see that we have different tabs now. You can use these two buttons to either go forward or backward. So you can go here and change different things about that checker box, or you can back out of it to change things about the material. And you'll see that once you actually apply a material, if you click that little box again, it's going to go into the material, or sorry, the texture that you've already applied. To reapply a texture or to apply a different texture, you have to break the connection. Now to do that, you right click and just choose Break Connection and it will delete that texture off of the object. So let's say we want to apply a texture that we want to import. We don't want to use one of these built-in textures. I mean, you can use these. You can use the ocean one or, you know, whatever. The ocean one doesn't really do much, to be honest. Say, for example, we could use Crater. Looks like a pixelated Crater. So, let's get back out of that and delete that or break that connection. Let's say we want to use our own file. So, I'll click the check and scroll down, or actually scroll up to where it says File. So, I'll choose File. And now, it turns a little bit of a different color of black because there's no file loaded. The next thing you need to do is click the little folder right here where it says image name. 
and then it's going to ask you to scroll to wherever on your computer you have that file. So I'll choose this, my little conspiracy uh, meme. And you can see I've applied that meme to uh, this object. Right? And then whenever I do my render, and again, if you want to do a render without having, having render view open, just do a quick render. Instead of clicking the render view button here, you can just see here where it says render the current frame. And we can see that that texture does appear on our quick render. Now with the built-in stuff with uh, the Maya renderer, there's only so much things or so many things you can really do. Um, we're we're, we're going to go ahead and go through some of them though, and we're going to uh, push the the Arnold thing for another uh, another video. So I'm going to select this. Open my attribute editor, and let's go and change some things. Let's change the transparency, and let's change the incandescence. And this will make it kind of look like it glows. Maybe I'll make it a nice purple glow, something like that. Let's go ahead and do another quick render. And you can see what's going on there. It adds a little bit of a, a glow effect to uh, the object. We also have bump mapping, and what bump mapping does is it, um, it makes an artificial appearance of cracks and things like that, or bumps, mountains, a different texture that actually doesn't really exist as far as the 3D model. Uh, I don't have a bump map handy for this object, so we're not really going to go into that. Uh, we can also change the translucence of this object if we want to. Go ahead and do another quick render. See how all that looks like. Kind of blurs a little bit. It changes the uh, index of refraction, which again, we'll talk about that later on too. But yeah, so this is making really quick renders. So let's say that once we make a render, we want to save the file. So if we open up the render view, we're going to have to go ahead over here and check out these two buttons. We have save image, and that will save an image so I can do comparison. Right. Let me go and make a quick change to this. And let's say uh, we're going to turn the transparency off and the transition. And the can incandescence off. And do another quick render. And then save this image. So now what you can do is on this bar down here, you can compare the images, the renders that you have, check uh, changes that you've made. Now let's say you get to a position inside of this render where you actually want to save what you have. Okay, so to do this, and you know, taking screenshots with renders is not acceptable. It's just, it's, it's just not, right? That's what rendering's for, to create a high quality image. So to create a high quality image, what we're going to do is go up to File, and choose Keep Image in Render View. And you can see whichever one that you want to keep. So maybe I want to keep this one. Let's go up to File, Keep Image in Render View. And that will actually save it to your project file. And sometimes that's hard to find. So instead of doing that, we can just save it as a file and then choose where we want it to be saved. So if we go to File, Save Image, now we can go to Desktop, choose Base Render, and then click Save. And then we can go and open that up on our desktop. Modify, and we can open up the base render PNG. See what we get. For comparison, let's go ahead and render out the other one and save that image. Base render 
two. Let's open this up. And you can see we have a render of the first key. All right, so what I want you to do is to apply some material to your own vase to each part. So you want to have a different material for your spheres, uh, one for your rings. And if you have multiple rings, that's fine. You can apply different materials or whatever you want to do. But I want at least three materials, and I want you to submit the render or multiple renders of your object. Now one more thing, um, you can also play around with the light to make some more um, interesting effects. I, I'm going to delete that directional light and create a couple different lights. So go to create, light, and let's use a point light. And what a point light does is it, the distance does matter for objects for a point light. So it, it's like a candle. It's like the top of a candle, right? The further, the further you get away from it, the, the less light something's going to receive. So if I go do a quick render here, you can see, okay, the point light's pretty close to it, so it does uh, a little bit of luminance to it. If I move it further away and do another render, you can see the light amount actually changes. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly why it actually raised. I think I have my settings on my light kind of messed up. Go back here, do another render. And that's strange. Shouldn't be doing that, but it is. One more thing, you can actually go and change things about the light. So if you select the light and go to the attribute editor, you can change things like the intensity of the light there. If I do a render here, you can see now the light has and you can also change the decay, which is probably why it was, wasn't really working before. You can see here the, de the decay has actually made the light decay over time or over distance. So now if I take this light and move it closer, now it has a little bit of light, which you can see here. So let's go inside of this, raise up the intensity a bit, do another render, and we'll see that it does change. You can also add color effects to the light as well. Maybe I want to have a blue light. Let's see what's going on. Uh, another thing you can do is you can preview your light. by selecting Use All Light, and you can kind of preview the way the light's going to look for your object whenever you do this render. Again, that's just this little button with the light. You can use Scene Light, which is no light, or you can choose Use All Light and see what things are going to look like. So we can actually use multiple lights as well. All right, so make a few renders, uh, play around with the different lights. We've only used two types. There are multiple. You have ambient and uh, spot, area, and volume. Really, the only ones you really need to worry about using are directional, point, spot, and area light, volume light. Uh, I mean, area light does the same thing. It just doesn't get blocked. And uh, ambient light is it's kind of cool, but... You don't really have any use for it, to be honest, because point light does a better job of what ambient light does, and it's more customizable. So make some renders, submit them on Google Classroom, and in the next video, we'll work on more advanced materials using the, uh, the Arnold renderer that's built into Maya. Have a great day.
see you next time.